Hello everybody, I'm Delix. So this is my new background for videos. I uh, was doing some cleaning, organizing, and we're calling this the Nostalgia Shelf. As you can see, Transformers, classic Naruto cards, Naruto manga, Quayus from uh, Bakugan, if you guys remember that show, Batman obviously, and, and the signed print from the English voice actor of Naruto. And that's just going to be my new setup right here, and the Bloodbluster card. So. I wanted to do something interesting and new, and this is what I've got. So enjoy the new background, because I like it, and I got another Transformer on the way to put it right here on the nostalgia shelf, and that's what we're gonna be doing so far on the background. Because I needed a background because I felt like it was too simple, it was just my room, and I wanted to have like a better setup, and yeah, I did it. Okay, now then, Sakura Haruno. A lot of people don't like this character. I used to make often videos about her, but I just stopped. But I'll say it again. I've never hated Sakura. Personally, everyone experiences character writing differently. Some people see things differently than others. And for me, I saw Sakura as a character that had potential. And I like the way that Kishimoto wrote her at the original uh, part one series. Basically, the reason why she was so weak was because she had a normal life compared to Naruto and Sasuke. She basically had everything that they didn't. Sakura didn't really have anything to become stronger or something to motivate her because her life was basically perfect compared to theirs. She had a loving mother and father. She had a home to go to with food ready for her. She had people to talk to when she came home. Naruto and Sasuke, they go home and they have nothing but a room with no sound, no other conversation, just loneliness. And Sakura had family members to keep her, uh, you know, in company. And she had family members to like to love and they didn't have that. And that was their motivation to become stronger because they wanted to prove something to the world. Sasuke wanted to prove that he's not weak because he has a destiny to, to avenge his clan. His brother killed his entire clan. He had nobody. And Itachi told him, I was testing you to see how strong you were because I should only be beaten by another Uchiha. I gave you a reason to hate me. Now use that hatred to become strong. And if you want to defeat me one day, come back with the same eyes as mine. So Sasuke had a motivation to keep getting stronger because he wanted to prove his existence. That's why he was upset when he couldn't beat Lee, and that's why he was interested in defeating Gara and Neji at some point, because he wanted to challenge himself. He didn't have like a rivalry with any of them. It, it felt like if Sasuke keeps losing, he's not worth anything to Itachi. That's why he had a Naruto, because Naruto was growing stronger than he was. And Sasuke felt like if I'm not as strong as Naruto, or I'm not on his level, and if I'm beneath him, then compared to Itachi, what am I? You know, that's why he left the village, because he wanted to keep proving himself that he has a purpose in life, and he had a strong motivation. Naruto obviously had nothing, no parents, no friends, he was very lonely, he was a very relatable character, and that darkness and that hatred and that sadness that Naruto felt, because he even said during the Gara arc, Faruka have never came into his life and Sasuke Team 7, they helped him realize that life can be better, you know, life can be good because they showed him that happiness can happen, even if you don't have a mother and father. And that's what Kushina was telling Naruto um, and Shippuden later, that she learned to be happy knowing that she was a Jinchuriki because people helped fill the void of that darkness. Naruto didn't have that. He didn't know how to realize that people can help fill the void at that young of age. You know, he still had that weight, you know, that darkness of his dark past that everyone rejected him. Even though that he had Team 7 with him, his past never left him. It was always there. Same thing with Sasuke. He felt like Team 7 was his new family, but his dark past never left him. It was keep reminding him, why does he keep training? Why does he keep fighting? Why does he want all these challenges with Rock League Gar and Neji? Because he has something to prove. He has motivation. Sakura, she doesn't have any of that. And it's because she was written to be a basic, normal character. And I understand the argument. Then why the hell was she a ninja? That's a good point. Sakura wanted to become a strong female ninja. That was it. Nothing motivated her at all. She just wanted to become a ninja. And you can argue that motivation for Sakura was weak. If she had nothing to prove, then what was the point of putting her life at stake? What was the point of becoming a ninja if she had nothing to prove like Naruto and Sasuke, you know? I completely get that argument. Maybe Kishimoto didn't think about that. Because, like, to be a ninja, you need to prove something. You need to be worth it for the world. Sakura didn't really have anything to prove or show. She didn't have any motivation or did, she didn't have any courage to defend the village. She just wanted to become a ninja. You know, Naruto and Sasuke didn't want to become ninjas just to defend their village. They wanted to become ninjas to prove something to the world that they do matter and they have something to, to reach for, you know, if that makes sense. You know, some ninjas become ninjas because they want to defend their village. Naruto and Sasuke wanted more than that. They wanted to become something in life. Sasuke, the saver of his clan and Naruto, 
a very successful, smart leader at one point. You get, you get what I'm saying? So Sakura didn't get her motivation into the force of death, realizing that Naruto and Sasuke are way ahead of her because they keep training and they keep getting stronger because, like I keep saying, they had something to prove. Sakura didn't. That's why she felt like she was inferior. And I love her character arc in the force of death when she admitted that she was weak, I'm useless, why is it always me, I can't do anything. I like that because she's admitting everything that the fans criticized her for. That basically she basically did say that, yeah, I'm useless, I can't do anything. And all she can do is cry. So now that I understand the haircutting thing isn't a big deal for some Naruto fans, but for me, it was definitely character growth. And it did have a purpose to show that she's going to be the one to catch on them at one point. And she's going to be the one to defend them. You know, Naruto, Sasuke, and even Lee taught me something. Now it's my turn to shine. And the Force of Death battle, in my opinion, had a great story to tell. That you don't need to have Shadow Clone Jutsus, Fireball Jutsus like Naruto and Sasuke. All you have to do is have the motivation to prove something that you're trying to put your life on the line to protect the people that you care about. She went in blind. She was not talented. She was not gifted. She just used Shuriken Substitution Jutsu to defeat the Sound Ninja. And just putting the effort mattered. You know, basically the same thing as Rock Lee. He proved his actions of being a successful ninja without using Genjutsu or Ninjutsu, just Taijutsu. He had something to prove. Sakura proved that you don't need Ninjutsu or any special skills. All you have to do is have the motivation to at least protect somebody. Because some people wouldn't do it. Sakura, she did. She went in there. She defended her friends. She put her life on the line. She got cut. She got hit in the head multiple times by the Sound Ninja. Sakura's definition that even just trying your best, even if at your weakest point, at your lowest point when it comes to skill and Ninjutsu, you can still try to make an effort to do something. That's what I feel like her character arc was trying to do in The Force of Death. That you don't have to rely on special ninja tactics and be a very successful smart ninja. Just put in the effort and it does show. That's what I got out of her character arc. And I like that um, the development in Sakura. That she did feel bad and she wanted to do something. And she worked with what she knew and what she already had accomplished before you know, even becoming a ninja. She worked in her favor of everything that she knew at that point. And it did work, obviously. She was nowhere near going to kill the Sound Ninja, but she did have enough in her arsenal to at least prove something, you know, in that moment. Now then, you could say in Shippuden that she, yes, she did peak in the Sasori fight. And that's what I like about Sakura, is that she, she was weak to begin with. She was clueless. She was a fanboy to Sasuke. She didn't know any better. And you get to see that development shine in the Force of Death arc. And then, further on, later on, in the Sasuke True War arc, where she realizes that she can't do anything. All she can do is cry and ask for Naruto to do stuff. That's what motivated her to go to Sanani, that she was like, all right, you know what? Basically, I suck. I can't do anything. I'm worthless, and I need a teacher. So she went up to Sanani. Obviously, Kishimoto messed up in making Kakashi look bad because he didn't train Naruto or Sakura personally in the original series. So I can understand how Kishimoto really slipped that up. He kind of made Kakashi look bad like he was just favoritism to Sasuke, which he already said that the reason why I personally train Sasuke is because he's just like me. But then at the same time, you let your students go bad because you didn't train them. Like the whole reason why Naruto was so useless with the Shadow Clones because a lot of people criticized him for just throwing them out at the opponents while going into strategy is because Kakashi didn't really, he didn't really teach him how to use the Shadow Clones um, on that level. That's why when he went on the three year journey with uh, Jirai with training, he came back with Kakashi and Kakashi was like, oh, he's gone better with the timing of the Shadow Clones. Oh, he's gone a lot better with the, with the tactics of using the Shadow Clone. And then in the Chakra Nature arc, when we're learning about Chakra Natures, shows them how to gather intelligence, how to gather information with the Shadow Clones. And then during the Pain arc, his Shadow Clone movement even improved a lot with strategy, uh, remembering stuff, the knowledge, and gathering nature energy. Like Naruto's Shadow Clone started off useless, but then as time went on in further Shippuden, he got better. If Kakashi just took the damn time to teach him all this at the very beginning when he was 13, it would probably make it a lot more easier for him. So I completely understand the criticism when it comes to Kakashi. Now then, Sakura, like I, like I mentioned, a character that was weak, she was useless, she had no motivation at all to get stronger until she met Naruto and Sasuke and, reach, and learning what they were reaching and what they were trying to prove, and that motivated her to go to Sanari, and all that paid off in, in the very beginning of Shippuden. The problem is, after the Gar arc, Kishimoto didn't seem like he knew what the fuck to do with her, and it made her look bad. And in the pain arc, she was very useful, she was healing a lot of people during the pain arc, and the Five Kage stomach arc, he just made her look horrible. She knocked out Rock Lee and Giba, desperately who needed screen time, and she just knocks him out. Everything she was trying to accomplish in the Five Kage Sum arc, it did not work. It made her look horrible. She failed with Sasuke. She failed talking to Naruto. 
and she almost got herself killed. And it just, I, I don't feel bad for Sakura. I feel bad for Kishimoto for not trying harder with her. Like, you had so many opportunities to give her this moment to shine. Like, Sasuke versus Sakura would have been an emotional battle. But you decided to go for another Naruto and Sasuke. Then again, I don't blame Kishimoto. I also blame Shona Jump for saying main characters matter more than side characters. Sakura or Kakashi should have found Sasuke, not Naruto, in that art, in my opinion. And the further this series goes with Sakura, all she does is heal. And I get it. Healing is useful. And that's a great argument. But she needs to be more remembered than just healing. She needs to have character growth. She needs to develop feelings of what she truly wants. Does she want to love Sasuke or does she want to try to kill Sasuke at one point because he's real? But it's only about loving Sasuke. She needed to take the time to realize what she wanted and who she was and acknowledging that Sasuke isn't the same Sasuke that you remember anymore. All that character writing that could have been for Sakura, it was not there and he just made her look worse and worse. Sakura had potential. The story of her journey was there. Potential was there with, with her character and he just didn't know what to do with her. And it sucks. This is why Shippuden or Naruto needs a reboot. You know, Kishimoto's a lot better now. I believe he's a, he's a much better, smarter, more intelligent of a manga creator since Naruto ended. I feel like since Samurai 8, he knew how to write female characters better. I feel like if Naruto had a reboot or some kind of remastered of a small miniseries or whatever, Kishimoto can probably do it at this point because I feel like he's learned from his mistakes. But that's my take on Sakura Harno, that she had potential. She was a misunderstood character at the very beginning. Even if you criticize her for just saying Sasuke over and over again or saying Naruto over and over again, she doesn't do anything. That was part of her development, that she's acknowledging that she can't do anything and she needed help. She wanted attention of her ninja training. You know, that was good development. But what he did in Shippuden was my problem, is that he took one step forward with Sakura, then two steps back with Sakura again, making her into that part one character that did not need to come back. She is past that. She's past of screaming and helping. She's past that. But he decided to put her back in that shoebox of where she originally was in the original series. And it did not work well, you know? She was badass in the sorcery fight. You gave her that development. You gave her that medical um, knowledge that she learned to heal Conqueror, uh, develop medicine. She was up there. And then you were like, no, 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 no. We're gonna go right back how she was in part one. And I understand the argument, I understand the hatred towards Sakura as a character, but I'm just trying to tell you guys, she's not as bad as what you make her out to be, as long as you try to pay attention of what could have been and what should have been for her character. She had potential, in my opinion. She she did. Anyways, I'm Deluxe, subscribe if you want, and let me know what you think about my nostalgia shelf. And I'll see you guys later.